Welcome to PlayStation Corner, my name is Alex, and today the big question, have you ever had the dream of being a drummer in a rock or metal band? If so, today I may just have the game for you. That's right, today we're going to be looking at Drums Rock on the PSVR 2, a rhythm game that passes you the sticks, but does this one deliver an experience that's going to be worthy of your time? Well, that's what we're here to find out, so let's get started. If you do enjoy today's video consider hitting subscribe, the support means a huge amount and we have a whole lot of PlayStation 5 and PSVR 2 reviews planned for you all, as well as weekly PSN and digital deals videos. No real story then, there is a few cutscenes between acts in the three part campaign where we appear to be battling it out with the devil, but definitely not necessary for the experience though I'll give them this nicely animated in a cartoon style. What we are here for is the gameplay, can it replicate the feeling of being behind a drum set and maybe compete with the likes of Rock Band for anyone that played that back in the day? Well look, I'm going to say it up front here, it's got some issues but I've been having an absolute blast with it and it's nice not having a big old plastic drum set to build up and break down. Drums Rock then has two modes, Campaign and Quick Play. Campaign is three acts with a total of 21 chapters. Why they didn't call it these shows, I do not know. And then Quick Play, we can choose a song and tweak a few options, including a difficulty. The campaign, though, it's the idea of progressively unlocking the next chapter by completing songs and earning stars, each with the possibility of awarding up to three. One star, it's always simply beating the song. The next two can be a variety of things. Hit X amount of perfect notes, meaning the timing is spot on. Charge up and hit five power notes. This is done by bouncing your drumsticks off of the set and then catching them pre the note reaching that bottom line. This is then visualized by electricity charging through your sticks. Maybe you need to hit 90% of the contained notes in the song or even beat it perfectly. The list goes on but there's a fun selection to ensure it's constantly pushing your skill level. This campaign as well have gradually ramps difficulty even if I do think they could have maybe done with a few easier songs at the beginning just to kind of really warm you up. You can also then progress through the campaign without facing every song, often just one in fact if you do get all three stars but I'd still suggest face them all, improve that ability. As you get to the latter chapters as well, it starts to introduce a new obstacle. Some are great. I really liked, for example, when it removed the target line at the bottom of the screen that identified a perfect hit. It just kind of challenged my personal progression, but it still keeps it fair by playing it alongside an easier song. What I didn't like, one where it covers the screen in some sort of liquid obscuring your view, so you had to memorize what was ahead. Thankfully, the latter was brief, didn't appear often, but it felt extremely cheap. The controls feel good though, naturally, there's not a lot to it. You grab the drumsticks from over your shoulders and away you go, but you can even do this by holding a trigger to simulate holding a stick, or you can click to hold, click to release. I went with the latter option personally, but this is not the preset. You will need to jump into the game's settings. Then we can charge the drumsticks as well. Like I said, you bounce them off the drum kit, catch them, that makes you feel like an absolute rock star. And then to start a song as well, you'll need to tap the sticks together three times. Sometimes this will even be a note in a song connecting the sticks together. Though I wish the game warned you this was coming, it kind of caught me off guard and it took me a second to catch on to what it wanted. It really could have done with a brief explanation to say something new here is being introduced. One area they really succeed though around the drum kit and the controls, it's the sense controllers and the feedback. The rumble feels great and you start to learn that that is the connection with the kit. It just becomes extremely natural. We even get a few rumbles in the headset itself, though I'm not sure they were absolutely necessary. It's still a good cue though to tell you, you know, you screwed up or something bad is about to happen. The notes are pretty easy to understand then, flying demons, colour coded, they fly down towards your set in line with where the hit will be. Occasionally you'll even see ballooned up enemies, these require multiple hits and it will often require two hits in unison. It starts to get tricky though when it introduces a side drum on your left and right. These actually come down the same lane as the symbols. That's where you're going to need to start to memorize the color coding, but it still seems absolutely fair. That is though why my footage may appear shaky. It's because I'm not only keeping my rhythm nodding along to the song, but I'm also positioning myself for each hit. 
The main problem I had with the game, and it took me a good 30 or so minutes to really get comfortable with the kit ahead of me, it was hitting the incorrect note, not because I was aiming for the wrong one of course, rather they are, as I said, the cymbals and other drums in a similar direction. If I had any feedback on the kit it would be, I wish I could change the height of the two cymbals independently from the rest of the kit, because that was my only real pain. Instead here we can only change height and then the distance the two side drums are going to be from us. Once you do get it though, it definitely feels good and you'll be playing sitting so it feels really natural to position yourself comfortably in relation to the kit ahead of you. Because of the side drums though, you'll really need either a chair with no arms that get in your way or one with arms you can of course lower or at least maybe a chair that swivels. That's actually what I was working with myself. I did get the kit to where I wanted it to be in the end but there were a few frustrating moments along the way. My only other complaint, getting a long running chain is absolutely rewarding but I wish it had something a little more, maybe like Guitar Hero where you could go into an OP mode and maybe let's say get double pints or something. Outside of that then we get quick play where we can choose from the playlist and our requested difficulty and then we do get a store. Here tracks reward points and we can spend them on cosmetics, I think colour swaps on the kit, different sticks, even hand types. And then there's a few bonus tracks to unlock as well in the store including the tracks that featured for boss encounters except now we've had the boss's presence. That is correct as well, there is bosses in this game, three of them, they're fun as well, think a drum off, but basically it's a more challenging track than what you've at least faced that far into the game, and occasionally you will have a drum roll off with them, and they might even throw some sort of new obstacle your direction. So yeah, look, as I say, it's not perfect, it's still lacking in a few of the options, and occasionally uneasy, the tracks, the timing, it feels a little off, but overall, I've had a lot of fun, and that does make sense given, you know, it's a limited variation of what you are hearing, so no doubt, easy is going to at least feel to what you're hearing just a little unusual. It's also worth knowing, a bit of a workout this one, it had me building up a sweat as I swung my arms around and my wife constantly reminded me I looked like an absolute idiot and I did not care. That's how you know I'm having fun in a VR experience. Comfort wise, I had no problems with this one, you're sitting, the character is stationary, the notes are simply flying towards you. I think this may be a great option for those that are looking for something a little less demanding or those that may suffer from the motion sickness element of VR that affects so many. I do think it's one of the easier going games so overall. It's also got a free demo available on the PlayStation Store should you want to check it out first. The visuals I really like, the footage as I've said it's shaky as you're naturally nodding to that beat but in actual person I really was impressed. The cartoon look really works and while the demons are purely for show, they make for a fun spin on the usual colour blocks formula heading towards you. The store as well adds a nice dash of variety allowing you to you know, give the character at least a minimal stamp of your own taste. The locations, not much to them honestly, would have been nice to see maybe some more locations we could head to, but the bosses then, they were a highlight, a devil-like figure, a massive snake, both of those ones absolutely screen filling. The game then could do with some options around the colour coding of the notes and each individual drum element in my opinion, if I did have any crucial feedback. Being a rhythm game though, it is all down to the soundtrack and I did enjoy what they have in here. It's around 30 or so tracks, some of them are alternate cuts of the same song however. The difficulty options keep you coming back but it's worth knowing even in campaign they do repeat. The other thing to note, it touts artists like Jonah Jett and Evanescence and it's true their songs are absolutely in here but they are going to be cover versions. A large part of the soundtrack then, it's new tracks with the artist simply being drums and rock, so clearly they commission these pieces, but I do have to give it to the team here. They clearly have a passion for rock and metal because it's really easy to spot the influences from Springsteen to Sabbath, and there's some real good quality in here. Look, at the end of the day, this is an indie game. Music licensing is just incredibly expensive, so I understand why they've done that. The important part here is the drumming sucked me in and I think they did a respectable job. I really enjoyed hearing some of these songs. Drums Rock, I wasn't sure what to expect heading in. In fact, I was just kind of checking it out quickly to see if it was going to be one for me. I'm a massive rhythm game fan myself, so I'll always spend at least 15, 20 minutes trying to get a feel for something. That quick session though turned into a couple of hours and now it's been a couple of nights. In fact, it's been my main 
experience on the VR2. It's just a good time that makes smart use of the Sense controllers, the soundtrack sure it's covers and originals, but they hit all of the right notes there in my opinion, and the presentation, it's got that Bill and Ted almost vibe to it which really works for me. The drumming just feels good as well, it's challenging but with a decent difficulty ramp, and then the campaign mode, that should build you up outside of just a little, of, I guess a bit of an unusual opening spike. For me though, it's a good 7 out of 10, I think the price point, 20 bucks or your original equivalent is spot on. And yes, I see opportunities for improvement, but I also think the team, they are onto something real good here, and I hope they do stick to it. So will you be checking out Drums Rock? Let me know in the comments. With that, hit subscribe, join us here for reviews, that's PS5 and VR2 as well as deals weekly. And I'll see you all on the next video. Cheers, everyone.